God bless my brothers and sisters. I'm excited about this word today. I have never been more excited about a word because this one is going to destroy false doctrines. It's going to destroy everything that people teach about about tithes and about offerings and, and different things like that. This message is going to bless you. I hope it's not going to be a long message as well. I'm just texting someone real quick. Because I don't want no one to miss this message. I don't want anyone to miss this. I, I, I pray. I pray. That you, you know, stay with me. As I um, share this message. Every Bible verse. You have been hearing for so long about tithes and offerings and, um, you know, all those different things. But no one seems to ever, you know, they always bring up Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. Huh? They always brings up, um, huh? Oh, yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm going to do this video real quick, Ma, then I'll be out there. Okay. Yeah, I still want them, though, if, if you don't mind. Okay. All right. So, brothers and sisters, you don't want to miss this video. This is about, um, you know, people sowing seeds. You know, and I put the title, I put the title up there and the title says, um, let me read the title real quick. The title says, The Truth About Tithes and Offering. And um, it says, The Truth About Tithes, um, I'm, I'm sorry, it says, The Truth About Tithes and Offerings. Because it's, 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 it's um, this message, we, we, we got two main topics in this one message, but they go both together. Um, we're going to talk about the truth about tithes and offerings, and we're also going to talk about, you know, the false prophets and how people ask for your money, different things like that. And, you know, then we're going to look at what the word said. So it says, many Christians are sinning and causing those around you to sin by sowing seeds and giving all you have to the false prophets, false preachers, false men of God. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you will be blessed by giving money. There is no such scriptural proof. Satan deceived the church. God doesn't want your money. He wants you, your heart. He wants your heart. Let's look into God's word to see the truth. I love you all. So let's look at let's look at what the Bible say real quick. I'm brothers and sisters, listen, if I I know you guys might have things to do, but please don't miss this. This is the biblical proof of tithes and offering. This is the biblical proof of how people actually sow seeds and give them things. This is the biblical proof. Please, I I, I beg you. I think this is my second time I I, I did a video begging <laughs> begging um begging you guys to please please tune um don't don't go anywhere it's not a long it's not a long message at all it's only a few bible verses so i ask you to have pen and paper in your bible and i'm going to show you what god's word says about tithes and offering and how it has been manipulated satan has been caught today we caught him red-handed we got him brothers and sisters we got the devil we got him with what he trying to deceive the church for the last I don't know, centuries, he deceived, he deceived many Christians, he deceives many Christians today, he has deceived many pastors. I'm going to show y'all today, in the Bible, where it says that tithes and offering were only for the Levites and for um, the priests. So, you are going to be blessed when you tune into this. This is all the biblical proof, so please, brothers and sisters, please, I beg you, when have I ever asked you for anything? When have I ever asked you for anything? So please don't go anywhere. Cut your cut your phone up, cut your ring off, put it on silent. Lock yourself in the bathroom. Lock yourself in your room. Anybody ask you, say, hold on, just give me give me a few minutes to listen to what's 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 being said. So I'm I'm, I'm gonna give everybody time. Please get you a pen, a notebook, and your Bible. 
so we can see what the word says. So we can see what the word says. We got Satan, brothers and sisters. We got him. We got him today. God showed me. He broke it down just so we can. I can share it. Um, not only for, for me to see and for also to share it to all of y'all. So I want you all to have a notebook, a pen, and a Bible. Y'all have never seen me this excited before off of Facebook. I mean, I'm always excited. But this is going to destroy doctrines, false doctrines. This is going to destroy what people are doing today in churches. We're going to show you the, I'm going to show you the biblical proof of what tithes and offering mean. And I'm going to show you the biblical proof of when men of God in the Bible went to people. And, and, and God was using people to bless them. That they didn't take all they had. They never even did things that you see today. Okay? So, let's go first. Before we get into the tithes and offering part. I got to show you the first part of the teaching today. And that's about, you know, the, the, the sowing seeds and all this stuff. So before we get into tithes and offerings, please stay with me. I'm, I'm going to get into tithes and offerings. I am. That's, that's the second part of, of, of this teaching. I got to give you the first part, the way God wants me to give it. I, I'm ready to jump into it as well. But that's the last part of this teaching. So you can have it all together and understand what God is trying to show you. So, brothers and sisters, please, please stay with me. I, I, I beg you. Please don't allow anything to distract you. Rebuke Satan, you know, come against him with the blood of Jesus. Don't allow, you know, if your children just ask me, you know, hey, hey, babies, you know, can you just, you know, play over there just for, for a few minutes? I just have to listen to something, whatever. I, I, I beg you as your brother in Christ. Let's go to First Kings chapter 17 and let's start at verse 9 and 16. I'm going to take my time. I'm not going to read as fast as I usually do because I want you to read this with me. We're going to read this part first. We're going to do this teaching first. And it's all joined together with the tithes and the offering. The tithes and offering is going to be last because we're going to explain everything that, um, that uh, we're, we're talking about today. And how people of God was used, you know, and they didn't take from people. They never begged or asked. So let's go to God's word. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 9 and 16. 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 9 to verse 16 i said um, um, i said again first kings chapter 17 verse 9 to verse 16 okay and i'm going to read in first kings chapter 17 verse 9 um before i read before i'm sorry before i read um yeah i'm gonna read um verse 9 um Let's, verse 9 says, Arise, get thee to Zebranov, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now, remember that. This is Elijah. Now, this is, God is telling Elijah, how many men of, how many so-called pastors and prophets go to different churches? And, and they say, you know, how much is going to cost? You know, they say, um, $500, $1,000, you know, room, travel, etc., etc. Now, this is a widow woman doesn't even... Because whenever God does something, everyone is blessed. He doesn't just bless you. He'll bless those who you are around or those who, who he has sent you to. Whether he has, you have sent you to give them a word or sent you whatever, he will bless them as well. That's the God that we serve. If you're a true man of God, the spirit of God rests upon you. So that person will be blessed as well. So look what God told me. He said, um, there's a widow woman there that will sustain thee. That means take care of thee. Now, let's go, let's, let's go all the way down. And let's go all the way down um, to verse 13. No, verse 12. Let's go to verse 12. And he said, As the Lord thy God live, I have not cake, but in handful of meal in a barrel, and little oil in a curse. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. Okay, let me stop there. Now, you got people in the church today that is given all that they have. That is foolishness. Give if it's on your heart to bless someone or if it's on your heart to help someone. Give as 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 God has proportioned you. So you don't go and say, I'm gonna give a person if God bless you with a thousand dollars, that was for you. Now if you want to take if your bills are paid, your children fees are paid, you know, everything is taken care of, and you want to bless someone with a few extra dollars that you can offer. Because sometimes a blessing is just only telling a person, I love you, God bless you, I'm praying for you. And because you're righteous, the Bible says the, the, um, the praise of the righteous availeth much. God will hear your prayers on that person's behalf. 
That's why the Bible says to pray for kings and those on authority. You understand? So our prayers are what will touch their heart, cause them to become convicted, cause them to want to get saved, cause them to want to turn to God and for God to intervene on their behalf. That's why the Bible says the effective, fervent prayer to righteous evil of much. You see, this is why it's important. So when you see people at churches and, and, and they, the, the, the women and the men, they're coming up giving all they have, but they can't pay their bills. They're giving all their hat and this and they and doing that. You're causing, before I get into that, let me, let me just keep reading. And notice she said, this is all I have for me and my son. And this is people, people come to these churches and they say, God said, give $50. You might only have gas money to get home. But out of ignorance and foolishly, you're giving all you have. And you break down on the way home. What's that going to do to your faith? Do you giving this person all your money? You put, you, you sow in the seed thinking that you're going to receive a blessing. Nowhere in the Bible did people get blessed for giving money to God. What do God need? What, what can money buy God that he doesn't already have? What can money buy God? I, I'm, I'm just being honest. God can make anything he wants to make. He even told David, does, do, you know, do I dwell in houses made by man hands? What can we give God that he doesn't already have? What can we, what can we offer God that he can't get himself? What is God going to do with money? Is the money going to magically disappear? It's going to go into your pastor's bank account. And you're going to take all those trips and buy those expensive suits and those expensive shoes. Why do you think in offering time everyone start dancing and the pastor is the happiest he ever is during offering time? The pastor is the happiest he ever is during offering time. Even a wicked man, once he knows he's about to get paid, of course he's going to start telling you everything you want to hear. Of course he's going to start telling you, ah, it's offering time. Uh, give me 50. God said trust $50. This brother's trying to go on a, a cruise, and the cruise is going to be a hundred something thousand dollars. He's trying to make sure he's going to have everything sustained before he leaves. So he's going to pull what he got to pull out of you. Tell that pastor and that prophet, those false prophets, get a job. The Bible says if a man don't work, a man don't eat. Tell him to get a job. I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking foolishly. I'm speaking the word. The Bible said, Paul said, if any man don't work, neither should he eat. So if he's begging you for your money, he's not sent by God. Because wherever God guides, he provides. And wherever God sends, he protects. No one has to ask you for anything. Tell him to get a job. He's living off of you. I'm telling you, you're paying his mortgage. You're paying his rent. We're exposing Satan today. No games. No more games. Just the truth today. So let's read. This lady was on the verge of, this is all she had for her and her son. And a, a man is coming asking for a peace. But look, it was for a reason. Because God wanted to bless this lady. So look what happened. He said that we may eat and die. Verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me just a little thereof, a little cake first. Make me just a little. This is what he said. Make me just a little cake thereof. And, and then look what he said. Bring it unto me. And after, make for thee and for thy son. You don't see pastors and these false prophets telling you, don't give all you have. They don't, they're not telling you leave money for yourself and your wallet. They tell you go deep. There's money in there. Give all you had to God. You're going to receive a blessing. They're not telling you to keep something in there so you can have gas to make it home. You can go to Golden Corral after church or you can go and make your family a meal or you got enough food money. You got, your children have lunch money to go to school. They're not saying that. They're taking all you have. They charging for these ventures and these, these, these events, $100 for a seat, etc. Come on. They, they, say they, have, they have brought Satan into the church. It's a playground. Satan is playing with, with all these religious folks. He's running around, you know, just playing like it's a game. Look what he said. He said, make a little for me. Then he said, make some. Then he said, after that, make some for your, 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 you and your son. He didn't take what all she had. He just was hungry and, and needed something. But he was there on an assignment. Let's read. Verse 14. First, um, first Kings um, chapter 17. Uh, we at verse uh, uh, 14, first King chapter 17. For thus says the Lord God, this is after he already told her, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the curse of oil fail until the day that the Lord sent it rain upon the earth. Remember, there was a drought in the land. And when she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he in her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither the curse of oil fell according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. Come on, brothers and sisters. Now, you want to understand how we're causing people to sin and how we're sinning? Your child goes to school. 
you're going to all these churches and all these church events and you're going to church every Sunday, Bible study, and you're giving all the money you have. But then you can't your child can't do certain sports. Your child can't play, um, can't can't, you know, get certain clothes or shoes that's needed. The necessary the things that are are, are are necessary for you to purchase. Your child is seeing you crying and, 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 and saying, I can't pay my bills. We might got to move. They got all their friends. They're doing good in their school. But you're giving all you have and you're not seeing anything come back. You know, you're, you're, you're doing this, you're doing that. And you're saying, OK, you know, God's going to work it out. You're causing your child to sin by looking at God in a bad light. You're causing those around you to sin by looking at God. God don't have anything to do with what you're doing. You're being led by Satan. God's not doing anything. So you're causing your child, you're causing your child to sin because your child is saying, why can't my mom pay my school fees? Why can't my mom or my dad give me lunch money? Why, you know, are we, you know, we see the pastor with this and pastor with that, but we're struggling. And this, you're causing your child to sin by cursing God. He's going to grow up looking at God in a bad light, religiously, just like how all you grew up. You see, we didn't, we, every, we grew up thinking it was okay to, 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 to do this and do that. Because we've seen our parents always complaining, always struggling, always saying, you know, oh, God going to work it out. But they're in church faithfully every Sunday, but they're complaining. Every, every, they're complaining six days out of the week, but on Sunday, they're giving all the money they have and paying tithes and offering. And they say they're going to receive blessings, but no blessing ever comes. And then you grow up saying, oh, you know, being a Christian, you know, I just got to read my Bible and pray. No, you read the Old Testament, God blessed his children. He gave them food. He gave them shelves. He gave them land that wasn't even theirs. He gave them castles that was already built by people. He took from the unjust and gave to the just. Come on, brothers and sisters. I'm speaking the truth. Elijah was a man of God. He didn't take from that lady. He asked for a little bit. And God blessed them that they ate many days afterwards. When you go to church, they ask him for you to go inside. You dig deep in that purse. Go deep in there. I know it's more money in there. And you feel guilty. You feel that you're going to receive a blessing. You feel you're going to receive a blessing from, from God or a breakthrough from God by giving money. But you've been doing this for years and you're still stuck in the same situation that you've been in. You haven't advanced or haven't even gone any further. This is a, We're going to break down the truth about tithes and offering. I had to read this verse first to show you a true man of God that was sent by God and didn't rob a, a woman and just her child. He, he, he took a little bread from her and he prayed for her because of his prayer. And because God wanted to bless her because of her faith, they ate bread and they ate continuously and they wasn't hungry. You see? But you see churches today. Give all you have. Go in that pocket. Oh, the Lord is telling me they don't hear from God. Trust me, the way I hear from God, you wouldn't believe that that's the way that you will hear from him. You think I hear a voice talking to me. No, it's, it's beyond your understanding. This is it's not the way you would think. So when people are saying, God is telling me right now, um, uh, he wants you to put $50 in. $50. Go for, I know you got $50. I know you got $20. Come on. He already did the math. He got 1,000 members. If all you gave $200 or $100, that's $100,000. He already know what he's doing. So you got to be wise. He's trying to buy that new car or that jet ski or that motorcycle or that boat. Think about it. No one in church is being helped. You're struggling. You're stressing. You know, you, you, you got doctor bills. The church is not helping anyone. In the Bible, they laid everything at the apostles' feet. And the apostles distributed to everyone that was in need. The apostles wasn't living off of that stuff. Of course, whatever they needed, God blessed them. But they wasn't taking that money and buying themselves mansions and duplexes and condominiums that they were living in. They distributed to all those that would need. The Bible said that no one was in need. So look what Elijah did. He went to a woman. The woman said, all I got is this. But you got men, you got people that send their men of God taking all you have. And they live in lavish. And you've been tied and offering for the last 10 years. And you're still stuck where you're at. But you're believing that God's going to bless you. you believe in that God's going to open the door for you. What, what's he waiting on? Is, 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 is he not pleased with, with the money that you have given? Is he not pleased with all the ties that you, you have? If you do your research... And, and, and you do and you count your tax on how much you have gave. You have gave more than you have paid your bills. And where's your blessings at? You find yourself stressing, straining, car breaking down. You can't fix it. Where's your blessings at? Because what, what is God going to do with money? What can he get that you what, what can what can God? Why does God need money? when He doesn't even live on this earth. They don't have money in heaven. 
What is God going to do with money? He doesn't live on earth. Money was made for earth. The Bible say, heaven is, God said, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. He doesn't even live on this earth. So what is he going to do with earthly things? What is he going to do with earthly money? What is he going to do with paper when he doesn't have hands? They're going to fall through his hands. He doesn't have hands. So where is he going to put it in his pockets? What pockets he have? He's a spirit. He doesn't have a body. So when they say giving money to God, what, 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 your pastor needs all that money just to tell you what's in the Bible? A pastor needs all that money to tell you what's written in God's Bible. I'm just being honest. Brothers and sisters, don't give money this Sunday and see the pastor's attitude towards you, you not giving money. The whole church don't put offering in, in, in a collection plate. I bet he won't preach. I bet he won't preach. I bet he won't teach. Of course he's going to preach and teach when he knows he's getting, you, you're paying his bills that day. Of course he's going to preach when he knows he, he going to count that money in the back room. You know why they stay so late after the church? They counting all them offerings. They got the most trusted people in there counting it. And they watching them. They don't even trust people that's counting the money. Because they crooked. I'm telling you. There's no loyalty. They're worldly. Just claiming to be of Jesus. That's why after church the pastor stayed there so long. They count that money. That's why they got the two most sacred people in the back counting the money. Don't put any offerings. The whole church. A thousand members. Don't put any offering in there. See if that church will still stand. See if the lights will still stay on. If it's of God, then God will provide. If it's not of God, it'll come down to nothing. Try it. Don't put any offering in. Tell everybody that's in your church, hey, we're not going to put any offering today. You know, we, we don't have it. I, I'm back on my mortgage, my rent. I can't pay my light bill. That's not wise. God didn't make us to be foolish. You give, you give, the Bible say you, you, he loves a cheerful giver. That means if you have to give, then there's nothing wrong with that, but not out of necessity. Out of if God puts it on your heart, that's a different story. So let's go to First Corinthians chapter nine, verse eighteen. Then we're gonna go into tithes and offering after these full verses. Let's go to First Corinthians chapter nine, verse eighteen. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse um, verse eighteen. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse eighteen. And let's see what it says. What is my reward? Then really that I that when I preach the gospel, I make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. You see, what is my reward then? Verily, that I may preach the gospel, I might make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. So if, if we say, well, Paul's letter doesn't matter, then what are you reading the Bible for? You can't take one, you can't take, you can't jump, you can't pick and choose what you want out of the Bible and then shun everything else that's written in there. Go to Romans 15 and 4. The Bible says, for everything that was written aforetime was written for our learning, right? So if Paul sat there and told you and he was an apostle and God did unusual miracles through Paul, Paul was used more than any pastor you know today that's on this earth. He went all throughout the world preaching the gospel, healing, casting out demons, doing miracles, signs and wonders. You don't have a man on this earth today that has, has done more than what God has did through him. Not yet. You have no man. And he still said, I preach it to I preach it. And he said, we work it. We, he said, we work night and day. He, he, said, he said, we labor with our hands night and day. So think about it. He was humbled. Paul said that. He said, we labored, we labored with our own hands. So when you look at the word of God, you see that people are deceiving you into giving you their money. Paul even said it that they 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 work they work with their hands. Look what he said. First Corinthians chapter fifteen verse fifty eight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, the labor is not in vain in the Lord. Then you look at look at Acts twenty and thirty five. I have showed you all things how that you so labor and you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. That's not tithes and offering. I, I, that's what I said. That God is a cheerful giver. Um, look what he said in Second Thessalonians. He said, "For yourselves, Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse seven. For yourselves know how you ought to follow us. For we behave ourselves not disorderly among you." Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but work with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. You see, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. 
For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with all quietness they shall work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Come on, brothers and sisters. I'm only reading you what's in the Bible. I'm only reading, reading to you what's in the Bible. So this is all I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters. This is why we have to stand on the, um, this is why we have to stand on the word of God. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians um, chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7 to verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7 to verse 9. Have I commanded and fenced in abasing myself that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? Come on, brothers and sisters. Look what he said. Have I committed an offense and abasing myself? That means making myself low, that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely. So he's, he's really, he's, he's, he's not being funny. He's being real with them. He's saying, what have I done? I haven't took any money from you. I haven't asked you for a dime. I preached, to, I told you in the first letter I sent to you in chapter, um, chapter, chapter 9, verse 18 in 1 Corinthians, that I preached the gospel of God um, without charge. Now I'm writing to you again in a second epistle to this church. And he's like, have I committed an offense? This is verse 7 in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Um, verse 7. Have I committed an offense and abasing myself that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely. So where is he asking for money? If all the Bible say in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 that all scripture is inspired by God. For correction, for reproof, for instructions in righteousness. You see, that the man of God may be perfectly referring to all good works. This is why you're not seeing anything take place in your life. You've been tied and offering your whole life because it's not biblical. It was not for us. He was talking about the, the Jews. This is why Jesus Christ came and called them hypocrites. Uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. We're almost getting there for the tithes and offering. Just stay with me. If you're patient with me, you'll, you'll get it. If, 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 you're, if you're in a rush to receive the verses I'm about to read. And how can you serve God when you lack patience? When God moves at his own speed. When a day to God is like a thousand years and thousand years is like a day to God. If you're in a rush to hear the verses that, that backs up, we should not post a tithe and offering. How are you going to have enough patience to serve God when you have to have patience even to be a Christian? Bear with me. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm going to show you, brothers and sisters, exactly what's in his word. But we have to get there. God has to show you what else he wants you to see before we get there so it can all come together. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, let's start at verse 7. It says, Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God love a cheerful giver. Let's rewind that now. Now listen, write this down in your notebook. Now this is the word of God. We know how it is now. We can't add it. We can't change it. So the Bible says in Revelations. So we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're starting at verse 7. Every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God love a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you all have a sufficient in all things, may abound to every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness remaining forever. You see, this is what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters. If you're truly in God and you're truly living for God and doing what the word says, then you'll be sustained. God will make sure you have all sufficient, you have everything that you need. This is those are truly in God. Remember, this Bible wasn't written for those who read it and don't do what it say or those who are being deceived. Even you being deceived is a sin because you're supposed to know who is who and who is not of God. Look at Second John chapter 9, verse 11. I got it up here in the comments, I mean, in the title. And I put in the comments. Look at um, look at Second John chapter nine verse eleven. It says, "Whoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, have not have not God um, ha, uh, he, um, doctrine of Christ have not God. He that abideth in the, in, in the doctrine of Christ, he have both the Father and the Son. If there come any of you and bring not this doctrine, means teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed." For he that bid of him Godspeed is a partaker of his evil deeds. So you see why you're not being blessed? You're allowing these people to come in that are wolves in sheep clothing. 
if God is telling you don't even allow them into your house, then you're not supposed to be going to their events or even going to their churches or even going to these conferences and these revivals. Look what he just said in 2 John. They're not teaching the truth. They're asking. They're begging for money. They're all telling you about all this good stuff that's going to happen. This is going to happen. Listen, sometimes your faith is going to be tested. So your faith can, can, can grow. Remember, trials are the soil in which faith flourishes. So you have to go through things. The Bible even says, don't think of it strange when a fiery trials come to come to, 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 to test you. Though something that you think that something bad has happened to you. So everyone in the world is experiencing the same thing. Even Jesus Christ faced temptation. But he came out victorious because he stood on God's word. You see, even Job went through testing. David went through testing. Everyone went through testing. To bring them closer to God. It wasn't intended to destroy them. It's not intended to destroy you. It was intended to strengthen their desires, your desires, their determination, your determination for God. That's it. To bring you closer. Without, without tests, you'll be so independent without God, it wouldn't even make any sense. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Matthew 10, verse 8. We get, we, we get to the tithes and offering. I, I think we're probably about 10 verses away. Matthew 10 and 8. Matthew 10 and 8. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purse. No script for your journey, neither two coats, neither two shoes, nor yet staffs for the work, workman is worthy of his meat. It says food. Nowhere does it say money. It says for the workman is worthy of his meat. Food. Food. It doesn't say anything about mammon. This is the King James Version. I got a Bible verse where it said you can't serve God and mammon. It didn't say anything about mammon. Food. Because it's telling you, don't, wor don't worry about money and all these different things. If, I'm truly, if you're truly sent by God, I will be with you and I will bless you. I will make sure, if it's my will, that wherever you go, I will touch someone's heart to help you. To make it back home or to make it there. Or to bless you. In whatever way I want them to bless you. Because you're able to manage that blessing. You're humble. You're not prideful. You're able to manage what I give you. But you ask and ask and ask and you wasn't sent by God. You sent yourself. Let's go to Psalms um, 37. Let's go to Psalms 37. Let's go to the Old Testament. Psalms 37. Let's look at verse 25 to 26. Psalms 37, verse 25 to 26. I told you it's going to bless y'all, brothers and sisters. I'm so excited. Psalms uh, 37, verse 25 to 26. I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Brothers and sisters, are we serving the same God that David served? Because how can he offer such a prayer like this? Because he was truly a man of God. Are we serving the same God? Did God change? Did his word disappear? So... Why can David write such a prayer about he has never seen the righteous forsaken, nor is he begging bread? But plenty of people are saying God gave him a vision. God gave them this. Write down a vision. Make it plain. That's not even biblical. That's not biblical. Nowhere did God tell people to write down your thoughts. That's a contradiction to his word. Let me tell you why. The Bible said that a good message is ordered by the Lord. So for you to write down your vision and make it plain, that means that's your will. That's not God's will. That's not even biblical. Look it up. That's not what the prophet was saying. Read the King James Version. God was telling him to write down what I'm telling you and tell it to the people. Because it was a lot that God was sharing. Just like I have all these verses. I wrote it down. And it's plain. Verse to verse. It's plain. I ain't adding. I'm not taking away. You see, brothers and sisters? This is what he's talking about. So how can David offer up such a prayer? I, I have been young, but now I'm old. I have never, all the days of my life, Seen the righteous, as long as he said the righteous, not the religious, not the traditional, not those who just claim to be a Christian, but the righteous in God's eyes, just like he vouched for Job. He said, forsaken or begging bread. Many of us is, God gave me a vision. I got a GoFundMe account. They got this whole little paragraph they write down. Help me on my journey to go and do street ministry. You see them, you see them months later. Where's that same vision? They sitting back at the house getting fat off of your money. Come on, brothers and sisters. Where's that vision they had? 
They, I'm, I'm going to upload pictures and show you everything I'm doing. Come on. Once you got that money, Satan, first of all, Satan was the one that told you to get that money. So once that money comes in, Satan will destroy you. There's a Bible verse in the book of Psalms that said, there's a way that seems right to men. There's a way that seems right to men, but lead to death. You see, you feel, I'm, I'm going to put, you know, Satan's not going to tell you don't say that. Because he wants you to believe that it's the spirit of God telling you to ask for money. But nowhere in the Bible did Jesus, Jesus didn't even handle money. Nor did the apostles. They distributed to everyone that was in need. Their heart was that right for God. So how can David offer such a prayer? But we are struggling. We're stressing. We can't even pay our bills. So did God disappear? The God in the Old Testament that fed his children with man out of the sky? Fed Elijah with a, with a, from, with a raven? You know, I mean, Samson let him drink water. What's, what happened? They have corrupted the word of God. God is looking at us the same way looking at the children of Israel. He's looking at us from a great distance. You wicked and perverse generation. That's what God is looking at us as. This is why you see people unfaithfully in church, but they're still stuck in the same situation. Having advanced, having gone any farther, they're just stuck stationary. But they're giving all their money. Let's go to John chapter 2. Let's go back to the uh, New Testament. Let's go to John chapter 12. I'm sorry, verse 6. John 12, verse 6. This is John 12, verse 6. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had the bag and beard that was put there in it. So, this is Judas telling Jesus, why didn't the lady sell the perfume that she put on your body? And he didn't care about her selling the perfume. The Bible telling you that he was a thief and he took the, he took from the, the the money that Jesus you know that that he had the, he had the money purse. So he took for you see how Satan tempted him. You see how it, it never was mentioned that that he was going to per, 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 portray Jesus. But later on, you hear about him betraying him. You see how he was tempted, walking around with all that money, without having balance, self control, good judgment, without God per perfecting him. The things that turn him without God, take him through a, a season, without him being filled with the spirit, he couldn't fight against that temptation because he was a thief. How many people are thieves? When you give money to the church, you don't think they're taking a big portion of that money? All that money's going to them the same way Judas was. They have been, they have been abandoning God the same way Judas did. He couldn't fight against the flesh. You see why Jesus Christ never had money? He's trying to teach you something. I'm not saying it's a sin to have money. It's a way about handling it and dealing with it. When you're truly a man of God, you don't worship it. You don't praise it. You don't go around trying to find ways to collect it. If God wants you to have more, he'll give you more. God wants to take away or take away. That's the type of heart you have to have for Jesus. Because if not, you'll be, money will become your God. You go to church preaching all these type of lucky messages. Notice something about um, these pastors. They can never preach things that condemn them. So they pick and choose. There's no way a person can preach what they're doing wrong. Well, you know what they're condemning so they find scripts in the Bible to, to fit around What they're doing because they'll be convicted by preaching You know what they're doing wrong. So they pick and choose Sermons to make up so they'll they avoid notice true men of God preach about everything But you got certain preachers. They only preach about grace. Some only preach about prosperity Some preach about fire and brimstone. You're gonna die and go to hell. They lack compassion so you see, you either got one up or you got one down, one around. It's, it's an unbalance because they don't have the spirit. When you have the spirit, you are well-rounded because it's God working through you, not you, not your flesh. So let's look at, um, let's look at John 13, verse uh, 29. John 13, verse 29. For some of them thought because Judas had the bag, that Jesus has said unto him, buy those things that we have need against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. You see? So that goes to show Jesus Christ didn't even handle money. He didn't even handle money. He didn't even care about it. He didn't even care. The same way he doesn't care, he cared in the Old Testament. It's the same way he didn't care in the New Testament. He didn't even handle money. He knew that the love of money is the root of all evil. We know we have to live off of it. But money is truly something that makes a lot of people evil. I'm telling you. It doesn't even make sense how they burn money. 
and then they have to do this and do that, their system that they have is going to always keep people in bondage. They can give money out to people if they wanted to, but they have you in this world to where you got to do, do that. You understand, brothers and sisters? Think about it. They burn old money. Why burn it? Why not just give it to the poor? These things are beyond us, but we don't understand. The Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Matthew 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, or money. You see, brothers and sisters? Now, let's, why does God keep telling us about money? Now, let's go to Numbers. Let's go to Numbers 23. Let's go to Numbers 23. Let's see what God has for us. Numbers 23. And let's start at verse 19 to 20. Numbers 23, verse 19 to 20. God is not a man that he shall lie, neither the son of man that he shall repent. Have he said it, he shall do it. Or have he spoken, and shall not he not make it good? Behold, I have received a commandment to bless, and he that bless, I cannot reverse it. You see? So God's word is true. Even Balaam told Balak that I can't curse. I, you can't curse is already blessed. I can't change God's word. If he said it, it's done. He's God. The same way he made that, he makes the sun and the moon to rise and set every day perfectly. He, he gave them an order. They have to do it every day perfectly. You never seen the moon or the sun break down in the sky. Never. You never see rain not come. You never seen our world ever go through a drought where we don't have fresh drinking water. You have never seen any of these things that, 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 that you know, our life depends on. We got so many animals. We got more animals than there is human beings on this earth that we can eat. Cattle, farms, vegetables. We, we, I mean, this, this world's been growing since the beginning of time. So everything that God has set is perfect, but everything that man touches, we tarnish and we destroy because we don't live for God and we don't know his power. Let's go to Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, verse 26. Look what he told, look what he told, look what he told the children of Israel. Exodus 15, verse 26. Exodus 15, verse 26. And said, if thou wilt diligently, and, and this is what the Lord is saying, and said, if thou wilt diligently heaken to the voice of the Lord, thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. You see, what do we have today all in this world? Sicknesses, diseases, even Christians, children are being born, birth defects, asthma, sicknesses, diseases, child, juvenile diabetes. Didn't God just say that we would obey his commandments and do all those things? None of these things will happen to us that he did to the Egyptians, the diseases. But we have all in the world today, even in Christians. People say, oh, this lady just had cancer. Pray for her. Why can't y'all go and heal her? The Bible says he gave us power over sicknesses. Why can't you go heal her? Y'all got to start questioning these churches and these church members and these so-called prophets and men of God and these pastors and these bishops and the prophets and these apostles. You got to start questioning, are they truly called by God or are they called themselves? Because why do sister so-and-so went into the, the emergency room for, for, for um, shortness of breath and found she had cancer. Why can't y'all lay hands on her? The Bible say call to the elders, let them anoint her with oil and pray for the sick. They'll be healed. Why can't she be healed by the church? Because the church, the God is no longer in these churches that you see in this, in this country. He is no longer in these churches. Where's the power at? You got church members dying and they're still holding on to their faith. Dying. But no one can come pray for them and lay hands on them and for them to get healed. Come on, brothers and sisters. He just said in his word, he said, I won't put the diseases. Where does, where's all the diseases that we have today? Because of the disobedience that we have in this world. All these diseases are, are, are permitted because of a lack of um, uh, obedience to God's word. It's real, brothers and sisters. We got to turn to God and serve him the right way. We can't be foolish. Let's go to Hosea. Let's go to Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. We almost and um, we, we're one verse away from the um, tithes and offering. One verse away from tithes and offering. Um, the verse that backs up why we're not supposed to do it. Hosea four, um, Hosea four and six. It says, "My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee." 
that thou shall be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of God, I will also forget thy children. You see? And they were increased, so that they sinned against me. Therefore I will change their glory into shame. They eat up the sin of my people, and they sit their heart on their iniquity. You see? This is all that we see happen, that's going on today. Let's look at Matthew. Before we go into um, uh, Malachi about tithes and offering, the last verse before we get into that is the book of Matthew. Let's look at Matthew real quick. Um, chapter 6 and let's look at verse 3 uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse 3 but when thou does alms let not thy left hand know what thy right hand is doing you see so this is Jesus teaching this on earth before he descended into glory alms meant you know giving money remember the, the guy begged he, the, you look at when the, the guy was begging Peter and John for alms he was begging for money he said that thy alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. You see? You don't let nobody, don't let your left hand know, okay, I'm going to give this amount to this amount. This amount. No. God is telling you, if I send you somewhere, and I put it on your heart to bless someone, or if it's on your heart to, to, to help someone or, or bless someone, don't, don't, don't plan this. Don't plan this. Let it, let it come from God. Let, let him put it on your heart. And then you can bless someone. But don't, I'm going to give them, hmm, let me see, I mean, how much do I have in here? I got 500. Okay, I'm going to give them 200. That leave me 300. I'll make it through the week till I get paid. No, brothers and sisters. That's not of God. Don't give anything. Give a hug. Give a holy kiss. Greet them with a holy kiss. Cheek to cheek. Or just give them a hug or a handshake. Say, God bless you. I'm praying for you. That right there is a, is a bigger blessing than finances. Okay, let's look at, so now let's go to Malachi. Here we go. We made it, brothers and sisters. I told you it wasn't a long, long arm teaching today. Let's go to Malachi, chapter 3, verse 8. Get your pens and your paper and your Bible ready. Let's read Malachi 3 and 8. This is every preacher preaches on this. Every church in America talks about robbing God. Let's see what the prophet was speaking on. Because remember, this is the last prophet before who came? Jesus Christ. Malachi is the last prophet before Jesus Christ came. So he was rebuking, God was rebuking the nation through this prophet voice because they didn't do what he told them to do. This is why Christ came. All the hypocrites, they were doing this and doing that, but they weren't doing it right in God's eyes. We're going to break down the word. Let's go to Malachi 3 and 8. Why people have deceived you in saying tithes and offerings. Or giving money is, is, is from Malachi 3 and 8. Everyone uses one Bible verse to pay tithes in the church. There's only, listen, if it was really something that God wants us to do, think about this, brothers and sisters. Y'all are intelligent. If it was really something that God wants us to do and he wanted this to be done, why is there only one verse that people use to support paying and offering in church? Why? Why is there only one verse that supports this? There's no other verses. I mean, you got verses that says, thou should not kill all through the Bible. You got verses that says, you know, be, don't be angry. You got a verse that says love. You got a verse that say don't be divided. Don't let there be division. But one verse that, that people, and it's not even what people make it to mean. They twist it around. So what's that showing you? Satan has deceived. This church today, Satan has destroyed faith in people. It's no longer faith in these churches today. It's built off of tradition and religion. Let's look what the words say. Malachi 3 and 8. Let's go, brothers and sisters. Watch how we're going to destroy Satan. And what he has taught the churches right now. Follow me. Don't go anywhere. Jesus loves you. Thank you, Lord, for this revelation. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, where have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. Hmm. Hmm. Where have you robbed me? Where have robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Let's see what Malachi was even prophesying about. Let's go to Numbers. Follow me now. We just read Malachi 3 and 8. Let's go to Numbers chapter 18, verse 24. Please follow me, brothers. Please follow me. Numbers 18, chapter 24 and 27. Now remember, the New Testament wasn't even established. Jesus Christ wasn't even here yet. Remember when they prophesied, all the prophets were prophesying of things that was already taking place and things that were to come. God was speaking against the things that people have done. Look what he said in the book of Numbers, chapter 18. 
verse 24. Let's look at verse 24 in Numbers 18. I'm starting at verse 24. I'm in the book of Numbers, chapter 18, verse 24. Let's see what God said. It says, But the tithes of the children of Israel, which they offer as a heave offering unto the Lord, I have given to the Levites to inherit it. Therefore, I have said unto them, Among the children of Israel, they shall have no inheritance. And the Lord spoke unto Moses. Thus speak unto the Levites, and say unto them, When ye take of the children of Israel the tithes which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then you shall offer up an he offering of it for the Lord, even after ten part of the tithes. And this is your heave offering shall be reckoned unto you as though as, as though it were, were the corn of the threshing floor and in fullness of the wine press. You see? Thus you shall offer, thus ye also shall offer and heave offering to the Lord of all your tithe which ye receive of the children of Israel, and you shall give thereof the Lord's heave offering to Aaron the priest. Out of all your gifts you shall offer every heave offering of the Lord. Of all the best thereof, even the hollow part thereof of it. You see? The best thereof, right? But look what happened. Let's go back to Malachi. See, sometimes we, we look, we hear what people teach, but we don't go and read the whole book to see why Malachi spoke on that. Now we just read that he was talking, the guy was telling the children of Israel, the Levites, that that, that that God was giving them the offerings for their for, for God was giving them the offerings. I mean the offerings and the tithes. It was for God. They burnt these, these animals and they burnt the things that they offered for God. Let's go to Malachi chapter 1 verse 7. Malachi 1 verse 7. Ye offer polluted bread upon my altar, and ye say, Wherein have we polluted thee? And that ye say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for a sacrifice, it is not evil. And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it not unto the governor, will, the, will, will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, says the Lord of hosts. You see? So he's telling you, you have offered up animals that were sick. You have offered up animals that were blind. You kept these things for yourself out of greediness of your heart. You took the good things and, and gave me corruptible things. But I'm a pure and righteous God. He said, don't even the heathens, unbelievers, offer their tribute money to the governor and the kings, don't they bring the best thing they have? Remember Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew, Mark was sitting down and watching everybody giving, um, giving to, the, to, the, um, to, the, to, the, to the treasurer. And the lady brought, the poor widow lady, brought all she had. And the rich were giving in all the things that they have. This is what he's talking about. He said, don't even the, the, the unbelievers give the good things to the governor. Why have you corrupted the things that you have? Why have you given me corrupted things out of an evil heart? So now that we read that, let's go back to Numbers. 18. Follow me now. Let's go back to Numbers 18. Let's go back and look what he said. Look what he said. Verse 29, Numbers 18. Out of all your gifts, you shall offer every heap up unto the Lord of all the best thereof, even the hollow part thereof in it. Right? God wanted the best because he's pure. He's righteous. God, this is what God is telling you. In the New Testament, God wants all your heart. He wanted them to know, you think because you can't see me or because men aren't constantly telling you what I'm saying to them that I can't see what you're doing, that I don't know your heart. I want you to know that I'm the only God over this whole earth, over this whole world. I see everything. I see the sins in your mind. I see the sins you do physically. I will not tolerate or compromise foolishness or, or unrighteousness you bring into me sick animals and you bring into me blind animals to give to a righteous and pure God if you love me with all your mind heart soul and your strength wouldn't you give me the good things but you'll give me food out of a dumpster you wouldn't even give your children food out of a dumpster but you bring that to God so you see how he's rebuking them and let's go back to uh, Malachi chapter 1 we just read verse 7. Let's go to verse 8. And if you offer the blind for, oh, I'm sorry, let's go to verse 9. 
And now I pray you, beseech God that he will be gracious unto you. This has been by your means, what a regard your person, says the Lord of hosts. Who is there even among you that will shut the doors not, neither do you kindle fire of mine altar for not? I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, neither will I accept any offering at your hand. Come on, see no one we don't read we don't read we don't we don't keep reading these verses. For from the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, saying, My name shall be great among the Gentiles, and in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, says the Lord. See, now he's, he's, see, he was just rebuking the Jews for their failed attempts at trying to worship him and doing it out of a wrong heart. That's why he said, you know what? The Gentiles, look what he said. He said that my name shall be great among the Gentiles in every place. He didn't say Jews in there because he was talking to the Jews for not doing what they were supposed to do. You see, this, this is all he was talking about. He wasn't telling us to pay offerings and tithes. He was telling them what they did, what they were doing wrong. And, he pro and this was prophesying that the Jews were going to receive salvation. That's why you see Paul went and preached to the Jews. That's why you see the Jews, um, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, when Jesus was on his earth, they didn't receive him. This is what he was talking about. It was prophetic word. You see, he's letting you know, this is why. This is why I'm rejecting you because of your heart. You robbed the things that were going into the storehouses. The Levites and the priests did the same thing. No one kept my commandments. No one did what I told them to do. No one um, gave to me the good things out of the offerings that I, I, I command them to bring. Your wickedness, your evilness, your heart is not right. You see? This is what he's talking about. Now let's go to Matthew. Now let's see. Let's go to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew 23 verse 23. Matthew 23 verse 23. Woe unto the scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithes and mint and anus and coming and have omitted the weighter matters of the law. Judgment, mercy and faith, these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. You blind guides which strain at a gaunt and swallow a camel. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, for you make clean the outside of the cup and the platter. So you see, they wasn't doing what they're supposed to do. That's why he called them hypocrites. He's saying, yeah, you pay tithes, you pay your tithes and, and, and meant and innocent coming, but your heart was evil. You did it out of religiousness and tradition, not with a whole heart towards God. You see? That's all I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters. Now let's go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 21. Matthew 22, verse 21. They say unto him, Caesar's, then they said unto him, Render therefore unto Caesar the things of which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God. You see? This is where we get it. This is where you see in the Old Testament that they were giving the things to God. Them things just sat in the storehouse and they burnt them for the glory of God. An aroma and an incense. They burnt them. That's what they did. Look at, uh, let's, let's go to um, Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, verse 22. Romans 2, verse 22. Romans chapter 2, verse 22. Though that sayest a man should not commit adultery, does that commit adultery? Though that of her is idols, does that not commit sacrilege? You see? So that mean that they was robbing from the temples. This is all what God was speaking about. This is why Paul took them on their own ground. Because this is what God was speaking about in Malachi. About them, you know, in Malachi chapter 3, about them robbing God. Because they were taken from the temple. They were taking things that was offered to God. In the, in the, in, I mean, I'm sorry, in that storehouse. And we're going to read about the storehouse. So this Paul took them on their own ground. And the violation or misuse of what is regarded as sacred. Because that was sacred that was sacred to God. And they were misusing it the wrong way. You see why Jesus Christ was flipped over the tables in the, in, the, um, in, the, um, in the temple, in the church. I mean, in the temples. Let's look at, um, let's look at Nehemiah. Let's go to Nehemiah 13. Nehemiah 13. And let's look what the Lord has for us there. Let's go to Nehemiah 13. And let's look at verse 10 to 11. Nehemiah 13, verse 10 to 11. And I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them. For the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled, everyone in his field. 
Then I contended with the rulers and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. They brought all Judah the tithes of corn and the new wine and the oil and the treasurers. And I made treasures over the treasurers, Shimelah the priest and Zadok the scribe. And of Levites, Pedon the next to them, which Hannah the son of Zechariah, the son of Metan, for they were counted faithful in their office, was to distribute unto their brethren. You see? To help those that were in need. The widows, the, the orphans, the, the, the fatherless. This is what James was talking about. That's why he said pure religion is those who look after the, the widows, the, father, the fatherless, and, 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 and the orphans. Now let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 31. Second Chronicles chapter 31, let's start at verse 10. Second Chronicles 31, let's start at verse 10. And Azariah the chief priest, this is Second Chronicles chapter 31, verse 10. And Azariah the chief priest of the house of Zadok answered him and, and said, Since the people begin to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat and have left plenty for the Lord has blessed his people, and that which is left is a great store. Then Hezekiah commanded to prepare chambers in the house of the Lord, and they prepared them, and brought in the offerings and the tithes, and they dedicated things faithfully over which Canaan the Levites was ruler, and Shammai his brother was next. You see, brother and sisters, where is God telling us to give him money? I'm just being honest, brothers and sisters. Where is God telling us to give him money? So let's look at, let's look at, let's look at, um, um, uh, let's go back to Nehemiah chapter 10 and let's look at verse 33 to verse 34. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 33 to verse 34. For the she bread and for the continual meat offering and for the continual burnt offering of the Sabbath of the new moon, for the set feast and for the holy things and for the sin offerings to make an atonement for Israel and for all the work of the house of our God. And we cast and we cast the lots among the priests, the Levites and the people for the wood offering to bring it into the house of our God after the house of our fathers at times appointed year by year to burn upon the altar of the Lord our God as it was written in the law and to bring the first fruits of our ground and the first fruits of our fruit of our trees year by year unto the house of the Lord. Also the firstborn of our sons and our cattle, as it is written in the law, and the firstlings of our herds and our flocks to bring the house, bring to the house of our God unto the priests that minister in the house of our God. You see? And we should bring the first fruits of our dough and our offerings and our fruit, all manner of trees of wine and oil unto the priests to the chambers of the house of our God and the tithes of our ground unto the Levites, that the same Levites might have the tithes in all the cities of our villages. And the priest, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites. When the Levites take the tithes, and the Levites shall bring upon the tithes of the tithes unto the house of our God, to the chambers, and to the treasure house. For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offering of corn of the new wine and oil unto the chambers, whereas the vessels of the sanctuary and the priests that minister in the porters and the singers, we will not forsake the house of God. See? This is all we just read in Malachi. They didn't do this. They didn't do none of the stuff that God told them to do. This is why we read in Malachi chapter chapter 1. Alright, let's go back to, um, let's go to Nehemiah chapter 12, verse 44. And at the time were some appointed over the chambers for the treasures, for the offerings, for the first fruits, and for the tithes of the gathering into them out of the fields, of the cities of the portion of the law for the priests and Levites for Judah rejoice for the priests and for the Levites that waited and both the singers and the porters kept the ward of their God and the ward of perfection according to the commandment of David and Solomon his son you see they waited because it was for the Levites and it was for the priests that's the tithes and offerings that was for it and it was and they was given a portion to God a tenth for that was supposed to be given to God but they have manipulated to say that these things are supposed to be for us. Let's go to Nehemiah 13 and 12. Nehemiah 13 and 12. Then brought all Judah the tithes of corn and the new wine and the oil unto the treasurers. You see? And I made treasurers over the treasury, Shemaliah the priest, and Zadok the scribe, and of the Levites, Pediah, 
and the next to them was, was Hannah, the son of Zachar, and the son of Metan, for they were counted faithful, and their offices was distributed unto their brethren. You see? So then let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall he conditionally unto my commands, which I command you this day, to love your Lord your God, and serve him with all your heart, and with all your soul. Then I will give you the rain of the, your land, and his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that there is may be gathered in the corn, and thy wine, and thy oil. And I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle, and thou mayest eat to be full. This is what Malachi was talking about, what God said that he will give to them if they did what they were supposed to do. But they didn't. So this is what Malachi is saying in chapter chapter um, 3, verse 9 and 10. Look what he said. Ye, ye are cursed with the curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all your tithes into the storehouse, that, that, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, herewith said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out blessings, that there shall not be enough room and receive it. You see? And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and you shall not destroy the first fruits of your ground, neither shall you vine, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. All nations shall be blessed, for ye shall be uh, delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Your words have been stout against me, says the Lord, yet ye have say, What have we um, spoken to much, uh, so much against thee? You have said it is vain to serve God, and what profit is it that we have kept this ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy, yea, that work wickedness are yet up, yea, they, they that tempt God are even delivered. Then they are feared of the Lord. You see how God was rebuking them, brothers and sisters? Nothing was about us giving offerings. He was telling them what they did. Malachi was saying, he was repeating what God said to the Rami, and they didn't do it. God, so God was saying, if you, wouldn't have, if you would have brought the, 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 um, the, the things that I told you to do and you were to keep my commandments, didn't I say before I would have blessed your land and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go back to Deuteronomy. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 3. Now everything I just read, let's look at, um, let's, do, let's read Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13. Everything I just read is, is um, in Malachi is what I'm about to read right here. And it shall come to pass, if you shall he can do thee unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou may gather corn, and thou wine, and thy oil. And I will send grass in the fields for the cattle, that they may eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods, and worship them. And the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, and there be no rain. And that the land yield not her fruit, and that lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord has given thee. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that ye may be as um, frontless between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when the sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And I shall write them upon the doorposts of thy house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied in the days of your children. You see all God said to Deuteronomy, right? So go back to Malachi. Go back to Malachi. Let's look at verse 9. And you curse with the curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all your tithes into the storehouse, that ye may be meat in my house. And prove me now, herewith says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open your windows of the heaven and pour you out the blessings, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I rebuke the devourer. I will. I will rebuke the devourer for their sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit, the, fr the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her um, fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all they shall be blessed. This is all God sent to the Rami. Malachi let them know they didn't do these things. He was repeating what God had said that they didn't do. That's it. You gotta think. Every every generation that came, these prophets were, was raised up to remind them of the commandments of God. To remind them of God's statues to remind them of those who came before me. People have died off. So these prophets were raised up to speak to them, to prophesy, to remind them of the things that God has already spoken that they haven't done. That's why you read in, in, in the book of Matthew, the Jews were the only one that were doing these things. And you see Jesus Christ himself didn't teach about tithes and offering because he done away with the, with the, with the, with the law of, you know, 
sacrifices and you know all this because they wasn't doing it with a, a sincere heart they they were and it wasn't that they were giving the preachers money they was giving these things to God in the storehouse and these things would get burnt up once they put them in there as a sacrifice for God but Jesus Christ our sacrifice so we don't we do have to do these things anymore you understand brothers and sisters now it's 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 the just shall live the Bible said we're not under law anymore under grace the just shall live by faith so I pray this word has blessed you those who have tuned in late please go back to the beginning of the video You'll see Bible verse and proof, not just me telling you what I think and I know and I feel that that doesn't that, that doesn't mean anything what a person think, know and they feel. Brother Ronald should only be preaching for what's in the Bible, word for word, scripture, for scripture. So I praise where has bless you. I thank you all for tuning in. I thank you all for being patient and fellowshipping with me. I love you all. God bless and be peace. Peace be unto you all in Jesus name.